The evidence is now overwhelming that one of Britain's most beloved entertainers, the late Sir Jimmy Savile, was also a predatory sex offender. It's believed he abused young children over many decades and two charities in his name have shut their doors. Many people in Britain are questioning how his behaviour went unchecked for so long and the scandal is infecting his main employer, the BBC. Europe correspondent Mary Geeran reports. As Jimmy Savile became one of Britain's most popular entertainers, host of the smash hit program Top of the Pops, as he forged a reputation as a tireless fundraiser, as he was knighted by the Queen and the Pope, he was, it now seems, leading an appalling double life, sexually abusing scores of young girls and some boys, some in hospitals, some in care homes, some in the very studios that made him a star. I, I just didn't know what to do, did not know what was happening, had, I was quite a naive 14 year old. The, the worst thing that I will never get out of my head is the taste of his cigar breath. I can't believe that I allowed such things to happen, that I didn't immediately rush and scream it from the rooftops, make this stop just make it stop. But I didn't. None of us did. Welcome. Another edition of Top of the Pops. Jimmy Savile was an iconic figure in British public life and was loved by millions of people. To have um, found out that he was a paedophile, um, somebody who was molesting young girls, is absolutely shocking for the British people. That his offending started in the 1950s, 1958, and went on to 2006. So we're talking about four, five, six decades of abuse. This is a man who was, I think, for all intents and purposes, in modern day life, an untouchable. Jimmy Savile died last year, aged 84, his reputation officially intact. But police have now identified more than 200 potential victims, and they're pursuing 400 lines of inquiry. One woman who knew... Liz Ducks is representing some of those people. They range in, in severity to people who, you know, allege that um, an indecent assault happened when they were seeking an autograph and, you know, he assaulted them by putting his hand up someone's skirt, um, to very, very much more serious complaints of, of sort of organised paedophile rings to other very vulnerable people where he would abuse them at, you know, bath times or he was given a room in a hospital and abuse took place there. Here we go. There were years of rumours and even some fruitless police investigations, but Savile's conduct only came to light after an expose for ITV by Mark Williams Thomas, a former police detective turned investigative reporter. He says Savile was as manipulative as any sex offender, but his celebrity made it easier. It was far easier for him to simply gain access to children through his television work, um, through his media work, through his charities, particularly his hospitals, where there was children in abundance. It appears Savile got away with abuse, hiding in the open, Disguised, it seems, by his sexually suggestive humour and his eccentricity. Give us a kiss, then. Oh. He rebuffed questions about his life with threats to sue and to withdraw charitable works. It's clear from what's emerged over the past few weeks that many hundreds of people, including hospital staff and charity workers, at least suspected that Jimmy Savile was abusing children. That sparked inquiries into exactly who knew what when at many institutions. But it's his main employer, the BBC, that's feeling the most heat. The BBC is a trusted, and I would say worldwide brand. Particularly people in this country trust whatever the BBC tells them. Now, with what's happened with Sir Jimmy Savile, it means that trust is being completely undermined. Here we are back home again with today's edition of Savile's Travels. Savile allegedly carried out some of his abuse on BBC premises. I should be giving girls away. That's what One person has claimed to be a witness to convicted paedophile Gary Glitter using Savile's dressing room to rape a young girl. The BBC's Director General, just 38 days into his tenure, appeared before a select committee of MPs and faced a barrage of questions about the culture that allowed Savile to thrive. The BBC's reputation for trust and integrity is one of its most precious assets and yet 
do not accept that that is in jeopardy as a result of some of the suggestions that have been made in the last few weeks? There is no question that what Jimmy Savile did and the way the BBC um, behaved in the years that the, the culture and practices of the BBC seemed to allow Jimmy Savile to do what he did will raise questions of trust for us and reputation for us. There is no question about that. This is a gravely serious matter and one cannot look back at it with anything other than horror, frankly. I was on BBC News the other day and the makeup person um, who'd worked at the BBC for years said we all knew about it, uh, which was fairly shocking. Um, so uh, I think um, there are certainly lessons to be learned that people uh, are not afraid to speak out if this type of abuse occurs in the future. But it's not just the BBC's past that's under scrutiny. It's been revealed last year one of its current affairs programmes, Newsnight, shelved a similar story about Savile just a few weeks before the BBC aired tributes to his life. Newsnight's chief has stepped aside while an independent inquiry takes place. And the affair has led another BBC programme, Panorama, to examine whether there was pressure from the top to drop the story. Uh, Mr Entwistle, do you now accept, in the light of last night's panorama, that the decision to drop the Newsnight investigation was a catastrophic mistake? Uh, I, I, I came away from the panorama firmly of the view that that um, investigation, even if it, in the judgment of the editor it wasn't ready for transmission at the point he was looking at it, should have been allowed to continue. There's no doubt that the BBC response to date has been inadequate. The BBC has dragged its feet from the very start of when this, the news broke about what, what has happened. I don't think as a result of this that we should look to scrutinise or say that the BBC failed and as a result of that has lost its trust. I don't believe that. I think that on a day-to-day -day basis those journalists working within the BBC have the most utmost integrity and professionalism. The BBC remains under pressure to uncover just how much the organisation ignored in order to make Savile a star and the country that revered him now waits as it learns more about trust betrayed.